<laughs> hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I'm driving this, yes, the 2022 Lexus LX600 places the LX570, and in this video I'm telling you my five good things and five, well, not so good things with this vehicle. I'm gonna drive a variety of vehicles today. I'm gonna do some off-roading a different video or maybe the same video. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to pull it real fast, talk about this exterior, and kind of show you this is the F Sport trim. So there's five trims. There's a base, a premium. I'm gonna try to get these right. F Sport, Ultra Luxury, and I'm forgetting one. I'll put it down below. <laughs> All right, let's check out this Lexus LX600. This is the F-Sport. It's what I'm driving right now. So I thought, take a little walk around of it. As you can see, I have a blacked out grill here. This is interesting. So very polarizing look on this vehicle, which is what Lexus is kind of doing the spindle grill. They say it's seven different levels or something. I don't know, bars. In this case, we don't have it, just a regular black blacked out, which I actually like this better than the full chrome. They do have a package you can get where it blacks everything out as well. So it's kind of interesting. Again, F-Sport badging. First time in a Lexus LX, we have an F-Sport badging. I have 20 inch wheels on this one, I believe. Dunlop Grand Trek. It is right there. Oh, these are 22, excuse me. They have 18s in a package you can get. They have 20s and 22s. Come around the back, we can see. Really nice styling here. I really like the way it looks. I think this looks a lot better than the other model. They made some changes to the rear. So I don't know if this model has it, but they put a kick. They did. Voila. There's also something really important right here. Behind this is the tow hitch. And what they did was they integrated it into the frame because they're using a new uh, platform with the Land Cruiser. So they have an additional 1,000 pounds of towing, 8,000 pounds because of that change. So the hitch attached to the frame. Yeah, like it should be. Well, kind of weird. Um, they got rid of the clamshell opening. You don't have the little thing that comes down below, which I actually liked off-roading and such. You have a little workstation there, but that's gone. Now we have a one solid piece door that opens. In this configuration, and this is the weird part. You guys stay with me for a minute. In this configuration, I can sit seven. I have two up front, three in the row, and I have two seats back here that fold up. Okay. I guess I hold down. Now, that's not the same in like every configuration. No, no. This is where it gets confusing. They offer a seven, a five, and a four. The Ultra Luxury, also known as the like livery model for the uber wealthy, $125,000, that one will have four because it has two captain's chairs with a reclining, cha reclining chair, you put your feet up on the passenger side. So differences there. This is the third row. It's gonna be a kid's third row, not a very comfortable seat, but again, Kid third row. The biggest thing with the third row that's important though, USBs back here, cup holders, and vents. And so even though you are stuck in the third row, you do have that, go down, go, go down. You do have that, uh, you do have some AC back there, you have some ventilation, and you can plug in your phone. So that's important as well for me. It's very important. So let me uh, close that down. Over here, we have the second row folds up goes away we have some HVAC controls USBs that kind of stuff um, this I'll talk to you about the interior in just a second what the color that is but I wanted to see the doors I'm always curious how solid they close that's a very solid closed door that's a luxury door inside we have said $105,000 is the estimated price exterior is black onyx interior circuit red uh, ornamentation is Hidori aluminum oh Hidori aluminum um, yeah, 17, 22, 19 city highway combined, max towing 8,000. It's got the same engine in a Tundra. What's interesting that we own, so the channel owns a Tundra. We have it. What's interesting is it's got more horsepower for 409 versus the Tundra's got 389, and this has got the same pound feet of torque. However, this hitches max torque at like 3,500 RPMs, and the Tundra reaches max torque at 2,400 RPMs. So just kind of tuning, plus this runs down premium. The Tundra does not. Um, Multi-way adjustable there. Interior, the seven seat. Heated and ventilated front seats. Heated and rear seats, the outer seats. This is a semi-aniline semi leather trimmed seat. This is the same one you're gonna find in a new capstone trim of the Tundra. It's it's not a real leather. What Toyota's telling me is nobody does really leather anymore because of the weight and the mass of the leather to keep down weight, which this vehicle did. They dropped 441 pounds with the new platform. So it's just, it's, it's not quite real leather, but 
It's, you're not gonna tell any difference really. Uh, we have the new interface, I'll show you that in a second. Let's go around. So we have the red here. Right here. I have some nice lighting here at night too. So it should have some decent lighting at night. And it closes. And there's that grill. Like I said, I like the blacked out version. That looks pretty sharp. And these are air disruptors. It creates some changes to the airflow as it goes around the vehicle. You see two more over there and it keeps it, uh, as you drive, it helps keep the vehicle stable. As you come around the inside, you got the driver's seat. So we have a double dash here, which is gonna cause a lot of controversy as it always does. But I would tell you from a driver's standpoint, I have plenty of headroom and you still sit up higher like you did in the other Lexus LX570. I don't feel like this is as high as that model was, but I, I still have that um, nice view outside the cabin, right? So I can still see outside the cabin really nice. A pillar isn't so big. Sorry, that's completely into the sun. And I do apologize for that. Let me go ahead and start it up. Typical Lexus fashion, right? Seat moves in, steering wheel moves in. Have that going on. We have a cool display here with new infotainment system. And then we have, like I said, the um, differences here. We have drive mode selectors here. Turn off. Drive mode selectors here, and this is the new infotainment system here. So you can kind of flip through things pretty quick. What's interesting is you can't split screen that. It's just gonna be one that one screen. Down here, HVAC plus different drive modes and different off-road drive modes, which probably is not this version. You probably wouldn't do much off-roading this version. I have a, a torsion uh, limited slip differential in the back that will lock if you get it in the right situation. But um, it really, this is really meant for on-road driving in the F-Sport. They make different ver versions of it. I mean, you can still take this off-roading, but I would probably do like a base or standard or premium. Um, you have, what's interesting here is you have two different settings for heat steering wheel. And I have a video coming out later on this week or next week where I've got a heat uh, th thermometer or excuse me, a professional grade automotive laser guided thermometer. And I'll show you some details on how hot or how cold these seating wheels are from Toyota and Lexus. So that's kind of what's going on. I mean, I have the wireless charger. One of the cool things is this. It opens this way for storage on there, which uh, take my monster and see pretty, pretty deep storage on there. And then you can open that way. So that is fairly handy. And the Kui wireless charger, which um, any Kui wireless chargers I've ever used, or Qi, or whatever you're saying the word for that thing, um, they don't really work that well. But this has got the Mark Levinson system. This is a 10 speaker in this, I believe. Let me double check. Do to do. Uh, no, excuse me. This is the 25 speaker, 2400 watt blah, 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 um, system. So wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, six USB ports. Again, this starts at 86,000, goes all the way up to 126,000 with the five different grades. Okay, one of the big features you'll hear on different videos and stuff is gonna be this. This is the ultra premium edition, or excuse me, ultra luxury edition. Get the right terminology, ultra luxury edition, and boom, boom. 48 degrees reclined, and I have the footrest here, the ottoman, right? So you climb in, you put your feet up, you recline back. It's hat goes like this. There's even like a hair diffuser thing that puts on hair. Well, if you don't have a hat on, uh, there's different things as far as massage back here and a whole apparatus. You have a cool box, you have a charging. So it's really set up for executives. Look, this is this is the new limousine. And when I was in Japan, they had vans like this. And so the people wouldn't use um, limos. They used vans, they used SUVs. People don't want to get down in sedans anymore. This is the option. $126,000 starting price in this. I agree. Holy cow. However, if you have the means and you're going to be a chauffeured vehicle anyways, and it's livery service, right? So you could, uh, you could drive executives around and charge executives to use this. I mean, that's what it's meant for. So don't get your panties all in a bunch and saying, oh my God, it's so expensive, all this kind of stuff. This is a very, very specific customer and it'll be a very limited run on how many of these going to sell throughout the world. So there's the details. Relax. Don't chill out. Don't get all keyboard warrior.
gear. Let's get into driving impressions. Uh, traction control works pretty well. <laughs> All right, so this is, like I said, the same powertrain in the Tundra, although it is tweaked differently. You are running premium fuel on this, not because of turbos, but because it's a premium luxury vehicle. Most luxury vehicles ride in premium fuel. That's what they require. So that's how they tune them for better power and performance because that's what you want in luxury vehicles. Now, I am in comfort mode. I could do my mode select and change to sport or sport S, which gives me the ultimate control and drives like a sports car. So it really gets some um, impressive steering wheel input. The engine shifts a different point as far as the transmission shift point changes. The throttle response is different. But I gotta tell you what, this is the same uh, curb weight around there and the same gross vehicle weight rating as the full-size Tundra. But this thing is pretty darn quick. I'd be, uh, I've been trying to get it at 060 time after work. I haven't been able to do it. Uh, I've been anywhere from like six to seven seconds, zero to 60, and this size of vehicle is pretty impressive. And that's in normal mode. Like, I'm not even trying. All right, so, you know, even, like, if I slow down here, and we, um, well, we skirt the law a little bit. Oh, there's a minivan pulled in front of me. Oh, let's get it on its butt. I mean, now that's in Sport Plus. That is the full Sport mode. That's 45. That's speeding. Okay, and they have changed where the kind of center of gravity this vehicle is. More in the middle, this new um, platform they're using, the same one with the Land Cruiser, dropped 441 pounds. Changing that, you have less body roll when you're, when you're steering, going around corners than you would the, um, like you think a big SUV would. This drives like a smaller SUV, which is the way the market's going. Everything's going a little bit more nimble, more responsive, and this thing is definitely more nimble and responsive. And with the F Sport, whoa, I have, uh, paddle shifters, different drive modes, and uh, well, smiles per miles, folks. Smiles per miles in a vehicle like this. So I've been uh, I've been pretty happy with it, even with the four link coil suspension and the highly mounted, the double wishbone is, is mounted above the frame a little bit. It's a higher mount than normally do with, with the double wishbone front suspension. Um, even the twisty bits and even, uh, as Joe says, and even the uh, not perfect roads, um, I, I still would feel the vibrations of the road but it wasn't nearly as harsh as it could be because of the way the dampeners are set up. So this does ride pretty smooth. I've done some road trips with the older Land Cruiser and I can see myself doing a long road trip with this because very comfortable. The seats are really comfortable. That's the biggest thing. Um, you spend all your time in vehicle in the seats. I feel like I have a good amount of seats, good amount of hip room in the inside, even though I have the center stack that is permanent. I don't have, you know, a, a pass through there a little bit um, like you would like maybe a other vehicles were as open in the years past. Uh, even though that's closed in, I feel like I have plenty of hip room, plenty of shoulder room, and plenty of head room. And so I'm 5'7", and I feel like I fit pretty well in this. And that's with the seat going down. It's a multi-way adjustable seat. I'm sure whatever size you are, you can find a setting in this that was gonna fit your needs. I can't see anything. I can see the bird. <laughs> okay, doing an off-road course with a Lexus LX600, which I just like to say, uh, have crawl control engaged. So if you don't know what crawl control is, it's a system that uses the brake actuators, the throttle, and um, in together in tandem to basically cause off-road cruise control. Uh, different brands now are calling it different things, um, but Toyota has had this for a long time, different vehicles, 4Runner, Land Cruiser, things like that. And what this is, a lot of sun there. Um, so what's cool with this is they've redone it this year and I have it on my Tundra at home. I haven't been able to use it because of blizzard and crud conditions, but it's supposedly a lot quieter. Like they really went in and made it really quiet. If you remember the criticism, or maybe if you don't know the criticism, it used to be really loud. People thought there was problems with a car, taking the dealerships, because it would chatter so much. It was really just the, um, ABS system working so fast that it would create that noise. And in this case, I don't know anything. I'm going to roll the window here. It's cold here in, in New Mexico today, but I'm going to roll on these windows. And uh, let's go up this hill. But I have crawl control on. There's five speeds. I'm on number three. It's like a low, mid, low, mid, mid, high, high. Really complicated marketing terms for those different speeds. But I got one hand, one hand up the thing. And we're driving. I do have a frontal camera, which is cool. I'm hoping I get some video of this, but it's got a transparent mode. 
and I can see the tires as I'm going up this climb. So sky view, I can't see over my hood. The camera points down, I can see where I'm going, I can see the wheels transparent, and crawl control is doing its job. Wow, that was damn easy. <laughs> Okay, so I want to show you this. That is that image on the screen. You can see both the sides and you can see the tires and transparent mode going up to the top. You can see this is the screen for crawl control down there, this off-road screen. See the tilt? I can tilt, not tilt my camera, you can see the screen there. And yeah, that's uh, pretty badass. I wanted to show off this one. I'm driving the off-road course. So this is the one that's got the black dot package. So you have the matte black here, right? So you have the one I drove this morning. You have the Ultra Luxury with the seven chrome bars. The one I drove this morning was the F-Sport, had the F-Sport kind of mesh grill. And then you have this, which blacked out. What's cool with this is I have 18 inch wheels that are blacked out, black caps. I have black door handles, right? And let's see what's in the rear. Uh, similar rear, you know, so nothing big there. Let's see if this has got it. Nope. I'm gonna see how many seats this has got. So there, this is, yep, still seven seater back there, but I just, I wanted to show you guys the blacked out package you can get on this and how cool it is. And let's see what the payload is. Change anything. So no, 1285, still 25, 72, 30 pounds for gross week weight rating. The rest in size is the same as what it was. Yeah. So there, let me hop in. Okay. I'm not sure if it's working or not, but let's give it a shot. So this is all I'm doing. You have the four high and four low. This turns your, your four wheel drive on and off. See the screen and I'm in three. And so I can see the camera where I'm going. Very nice, easy to see, especially cause I can't see what's ahead of me always, right? And then I can slow it down automatically just by turning the dial or speed it up. And it responds pretty darn quickly. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. I do have multi-train select as well. I can select the train I'm on, it'll adjust for that train. And I can use crawl control for this entire, entire trail. So, you know, hunting up in the mountains or if you're gonna, you know, live in a property, a ranch or something like this, um, this is pretty handy driving. Makes a lot less stressful, a lot less fatiguing. And uh, it's like a Sunday drive and I just, and I can turn it off and drive normally too. It just depends what I wanna do. And I have the locking, um, well I have the, the LSD and so the torsion LSD back here. So it'll, it'll, if the, I, apparently if the wheels turn just right, I can get the, the rear axle lock, but these kind of features of like crawl control and stuff going on. I mean, it's almost like it's overkill. There's so much stuff off road that, you know, you just got to pick which toy you want to play with and that's what you use. All right. So on this corner, what we're doing is there's a feature that is a rear turn assist. And it's gonna do it right there. I can I can hear it. It's gonna skid a little bit. What it's doing, it's holding the outside tire on the right side, or you know, the passenger side, and let me get around this corner that much easier. So as vehicles have gotten bigger, off-road vehicles have gotten bigger, like everything's gotten bigger. When you're trying to make these hairpin switchback corners, it's tough with the size vehicle you have, and I can toggle it on and off. I'll do it on the screen here in a minute, and then um, it's useful. So let me let me do it here. I'll show you it one more time. So it's right there. There it is right there, turn it on. And I'm just gonna turn and you can see the tires and you can see it's doing its thing. It's holding that passenger side tire a little bit, allowing me to make this turn a whole lot easier. Now I have some more experience with this. I was doing an off-road event with, um, I'm gonna turn it off because it'll still try to do it even on a metal course a mellow, mellow turn, I should say. I was doing an uh, overlanding trip with Toyota. We had some people there helping us and they had a Land Cruiser and they had a little uh, off-road trailer that's got a little cook stove in it. And it's a cool off-road trailer, you know, seen all the time. Anyways, going through the switchback with the Land Cruiser that has that same feature, it was able to take the vehicle and the trailer through the switchback without any problems. Typically in a situation like that, you're gonna unhook the trailer and like, drag it yourself, or you can try to back up and go a different direction. I mean, it would have been a, a big problem because we're going down this hill and the switchbacks and stuff going on, but it would have been trapped. But having that feature was really useful in that circumstance. Would you use it all the time? No, 
but in an off-road situation or maybe a situation I'm not thinking of, it is a really handy little feature, especially 112 inch wheelbase, longer vehicle, bigger size. It's cool. Here's where crawl control really works well, right? So instead of downhill assist control where you get momentum and it kind of slows you down, crawl control is much more composed going down. I'm in crawl control two or mid low or whatever they call it. And uh, you can, I mean, I'm like coming over the dash because I, my momentum is going this way towards the dash. And uh, this is just cruising down. I got, look, ma, no hands. Right, no, okay, that's not safe. But I mean, I'm just cruising right down. No skidding, the tires aren't moving out of place. And yeah, that is pretty damn impressive. Really a big improvement over the prior generation crawl control system that, well, was a little jerky, a little loud, that kind of stuff. Okay, so what I'm gonna do the rest of this video, or rest of this off-road course, is I'm gonna play with crawl control because I'm so enamored by how quiet this is. And I'm gonna turn it down. And what I wanna do is I wanna put, if you, there, I got the camera. If you have used this feature before, Tacoma, you can see my Tacoma videos, Tundra, yes, Crow, I can hear you. Listen to this. I mean, that's it. If you go back and watch my old Tacoma videos, you'll hear that thing just chattering like a squirrel. <laughs> so um, that is much improved. And so I think I'm just gonna uh, finish up my drive. Let's get back to the rest of this review, or first drive. Yeah, things you need to know, things you don't need to know. Okay, as I drive back on these country roads, which are nice, nice dirt country roads, um, I wanted to wrap things up. Um, five things are good, five things not so good, things I've learned today, had a great day. Sorry this video is a little bit over the, all over the place. That's what happens in drive events. You get all this different stuff going on and trying to capture it all. But let's talk about five things. So number one, things I really like about this, about this truck or this SUV, whatever you call it, is how engineered it is. I've had the chance to crawl underneath of it a few, little bit and really check out the, the build quality of the undercarriage and how strong the frame looks, how strong all the components look, the four link suspension, the independent front suspension, looking at that as far as the wishbone and the size of bars we're using and the tow hooks and stuff. I mean, they've done a really good job on making this very, makes me feel really good about it, as far as I should say, from an engineering standpoint. The second thing I would talk about is I'm really impressed with the way they tuned this 3.5 liter V6 engine, the turbo from the Tundra, the way they tuned it for the Lexus, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's interesting how it's got more horsepower and the same amount of torque, but the torque is a different wave on the way on the torque curve. It hits full torque later on, but it's I, I'm not towing with this all the time. It's only 8,000 pounds of towing, so there's a little difference there what I need from it. And I do like a little more horsepower. So I am really impressed with how they tuned it. So able to use the same engine, but use it differently. Okay, number three, and this is something that's really important to me, is how quiet and comfortable it is in the cabin. This, I've been in the seats all day, and the seats feel really comfortable. I can be in these seats for a long period of time. That's really important to me. It's really quiet in the cabin. There's not a lot of noise in the cabin. Um, it's, everything's comfortable. Everything I've touched today, it, it's, it's not soft, soft touch, like plush, like Rolls Royce plush, but it's, it's soft enough that it, it, I feel good about driving it. I feel good that I'm not gonna be tired of all this hard plastic. I have nothing to say about hard plastic. I, I got w real wood, I got really nice materials in here. Okay, so that's number three. Uh, number four thing, and I'd done a list earlier and I didn't like it, but now I like it, right? Things all change. So when I was off-roading, you saw the two screens. I'm usually not a two screen kind of guy. One screen, that's it. Too many screens is too much. However, being able to see the wheel articulation and run the four wheel drive system and manage it here, without impacting the camera angle of looking over stuff and where the camera sh camera angle was shooting at stuff was pretty handy. I I kind of like that. That that was nice to be able to see the differences there and have it on different screens that were competing with my eyeballs as far as I got to look here, I got to look there, I got to split screen, I got to do this, do that. So it was nice to have those two features together. Now, maybe they could have done one massive screen instead. Uh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But I'm just saying I didn't mind it. I actually liked it. And if you look around at like the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which is a solid competitor to, 
they have a lot of screens in that vehicle too. So this is kind of the way the luxury customer is going. A lot of different screens do different things. So, okay, that's fine, fair enough. On number four, it's gonna be visibility. Like this cabin, I can see a lot through the window. Windshield's really nice, good size. Um, I can see around me. I feel like I can have a lot of good visibility in this, even though it's a bigger vehicle, because of the way the A-pillar, which is where the grab handle is, it's really sort of narrow, and I can see out around. That I like that quite a bit. Uh, number five thing that I like is like all the I like all the features I do I know it's really expensive and this is probably more features I need all I need is just four-wheel drive but full-time four-wheel drive multi-train select different drive modes I have different the downhill assist control plus crawl control I mean I just have all the things that I can go on a Sunday trip out here with the picnic basket and the family and go off-road for a few hours or whatever I need to do but I, I like the features and that I'm gonna tell you that rear um, rear cross turn or the rear turn assist it's a really na nice feature it's really handy so i'm i do like the features and i feel like after driving some land rovers and things those features are a little bit too much i feel like with this it's a little bit more kiss right a little more keep keep it simple fill the blank in um as far as how it works and so i, I do like that now things i don't really care for in this vehicle and i'm gonna nitpick stuff because at this price point you probably should nitpick stuff that start stop button's weird. Like it, I, I keep pushing for the dash or I wanna find it by the shifter. Like some of the luxury brands have it, like I think Land Rover does it by the shifter. And so you get in, you press it by the shifter start and it starts it up. Putting it with the screen on top, it just doesn't fit well. And it just it looks out of place. It looks bulky, it's shiny a little bit. The chrome's shining at me in the light a little bit. And so I can see my hand movement around it when I'm doing my wave my hands. I'm just not a big fan of that. Okay, i just not a big fan of that. Uh, number two, it's a very polarizing front end. There's no good way to say that. Um, I think this one blacked out, I like it better. Um, maybe it's too much chrome, maybe it's the seven bars. I do. I, I kind of like the F-Sport I had this morning with the mesh grill. I like it a little bit better, but there's just not a lot of, oh, look at that, to this vehicle from my standpoint. I'm sure there's people gonna say it, people love it, it doesn't, to me stand out as cool or different it just stands out <laughs> that's kind of way to say it okay number three and number four i'm gonna show you a different video i shot this morning and i'm just surprised these features don't exist in this vehicle okay now getting back to the f sport there's two things that stand out to me that i don't love about this number one is there's no rear view mirror that has the uh, camera in built into it this is standard on or excuse me on the upper trims and it's just surprising to me that, that that, and there is no panoramic moonroof that goes all the way back. It's just a small one here. Why do I say that surprises me? Well, in my $60,000 Toyota Tundra Limited, I have both those features. I have a panel moonroof and I have the review camera mirror. So I'm just surprised at this price point that I don't get those features. Kind of surprising. Okay, number five thing is that we do have tow hooks on this vehicle. It's something that you don't see immediately. I'll show you some uh, video here in a second where I'm crawling around and you can see the tow hooks and the recovery points. All right, speaking of tow hooks, right there is your tow hook. You can probably do another one over there too, but that's right there and you have this much bumper to go. Get to it back here. You can either tie into the receiver, put one there or right here is your tow hook back here a recovery point i should say so yeah recovery points they do have them now it has them why bring that up well a little hard to get to right so you're gonna damage your bumper somehow if you're in a weird situation where your front end's like this you're getting pulled out like this or if you're something's happening so i anticipate that if you are going to do any sort of recovery like let's say let's say you go on an icy road in the winter time in the snow and you do a donut and you end up in the field who hasn't done that? Okay, maybe you haven't, I have. If you've done that, you know, you may be in a weird situation where you're up too high or down too high and you're high centered and you can't move the vehicle. And so I understand that there's some limitations for getting the crash test safety and aerodynamics, all the stuff, excuses I'm getting for this problem. But you know, to me, it's, it's kind of weird that it's not in a better spot. I can't get to a little bit easier. So. Um, I gotta figure out where I'm going because there's two trails here and I'm pretty sure I'm on the wrong one. So I'm gonna let you guys go. But check that video out over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.